Good day, friends and subscribers. So, the Lord just put it on my heart to share a word of encouragement and to radiate some of this light and love that I feel within myself and what God wants to share with you. So, I'm actually in a location that I haven't been in this specific spot in 13 years. Actually, last month made 13 years as I thought about it. I actually, it's a grassy field, if you can see. And I don't know if you can see beyond, but there's actually water out there. It's a park that I came to. And it was a time I came here when I was pregnant, but I didn't know I was pregnant yet. And I had this desire one day after work to come to this park and to lay down and get some sun and I remember I think it was very very late August because I found I was pregnant Labor Day weekend so it would have been right before and in the state of Maine it gets cool before you know around that time it's not really the time you typically are are laying out usually you're thinking about school things and civil things and fall coming and such even though we do get Indian summer in September, but I digress. So I came to this park and I didn't have a bathing suit and I just came to this remote location and just got down to little clothing and laid in the sun. And the warmth that I felt, it was like a cat laying in the sun. It was like my body just soaked in every bit of vitamin D that was being produced and the the need for the sun's rays and for that warmth. And, you know, at times that warmth is very reminiscent of a hug or of love. It's something that's needed for nourishment, sustenance, to to feel connected and whole. And I didn't know I was pregnant at the time, so my body was in need of those things. I share that now because I didn't plan on coming to this location. I was going to come to an area in this park, but not here. And then I thought about the memory of coming here to gather that sun. And it's so chiming in with what I want to share now, which is about the love of God but not in a fluffy way like, Oh, you're loved by God. And, and yes, but that when you have the presence of God, that the enemy cannot stand. When we talk about deliverance and having demonic attacks and going through trials and tribulations of which we all go through at one time or another, I do believe some go through it more than others. So it's not negating any of that. But when we go through all of those things, the presence of God is not fully in our midst because demons cannot stand in God's presence. So though I am a proponent of casting out demons, you know, Mark is at 16, 18, you know, the, the Jesus said to the disciples, go and preach the gospel go and those that believe will cast out demons will lay the hands on the sick and they will be healed this is all true and I believe in binding and rebuking and engaging the enemy not to instigate but to counteract with the Word of God using the authority that Jesus gives us so I'm all for that but something came on me today strong that the presence of God eradicates all evil all the time, 100%. You know, I, I know for myself, there are different, just like any other human being, there are things that I deal with, struggle with, what have you. Even some days, let's say I have an ache or a pain or, or whatever. And I've noticed that whenever I'm worshiping God, when I am truly worshiping the Lord, you know, raising my hands and just giving it all to God and calling on God and just singing in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit and just, just basking in His presence, I don't feel pain. 
I don't feel, if anything, there's complete healing. Tears may come, joy may manifest, uh, all these things. And, you know, the connecting factor is the presence of God. We, there's a scripture, resist the devil and he will flee. But there's the submitting to God. What is submission? What, what is it when we submit to something? What does God ask of us? God wants us to love him as he loves us. To be fully into this relationship with him. And what does that mean? That means being in his presence. This is, this is what he wants from us. And there is such healing 100% of the time. So when we talk about basking in the sun to feel the warmth and to get nourishment, when we talk about all of these things, do we not realize that it's not this fluffy, passive, apathetic, powerless love or, or powerless energy, that it is the very power of God that eradicates all evil, where demons must flee, where everything is held in subjection to God. So when, you know, there's, there's, there's a saying, and I don't know what to call it other than a saying, um, and, and I've elaborated on it, that anger begets anger, love begets love. How unorthodox is it for us and how unusual and how much are we not even prepared to respond in that way? Meaning we, we, we have anger happen and we get angry. We have love happen and we respond with love. But what about always responding with love? What about that? And what if it's not our idea of love, but it's God? Because God is love. Jesus is love. We have this new logo nowadays that love, love is love. Love is love. Well, what is the definition of that? Jesus is love. And it's not this idea that we've had clouded in our mind of who Jesus is. Because religion and churches and organizations have unfortunately damaged a lot of people. And I'm not against, um, I'm not against congregations and organizations of God. What I'm trying to say is the admission that people are not perfect. Those of us that call ourselves Christian, a true follower of Christ is a follower of Christ that wants to take on the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ. We submit ourselves to God, a renewing of the mind, a transformation of the heart and living for Christ and doing what Christ would do. We don't claim our own perfection. And unfortunately, when there are evil or wicked people, even, you know, in every realm of society, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. And I, I hate to bring up an organization like the Boy Scouts. I'm thinking of it probably because it's been in the news. But, you know, um, that or um, the circus or whatever it may be. Every, every organization every realm of existence, there are evil people or there are people that Satan will use for his agenda to cause confusion because he's the author of confusion. He's the father of lies and he certainly doesn't want anyone worshiping God. So he's going to use Christians the most if he can. And he's going to use those that are leaders if he can to basically confuse and to cause people to pull away from. So if you've been hurt by the church, or you've had someone in your life that condemned you because of sin, or you've had someone that pointed the finger at you saying you're evil, or you just felt like you didn't want to be told what to do, apparently that was an accusing spirit because that's not where, where God comes from. 
He wants to cause wholeness and shalom. He wants to cause you to come together into a fullness of joy and peace. But if you are getting that from the world, then it is in part. And this is where our, our spirits at time can kind of put up a wall because of how we've been hurt by the world. The only separation we should be worried about is separation from God. That is sin. And when we were born here, there was a separation that occurred. That's what we should be worried about as opposed to trying to separate from God because of the separation we feel within ourselves. It's a, it's a dog eat dog situation when we get into that. But I, I bring up all this to say that there are those of us that have been hurt, but it's not love is love. It's Jesus, Yeshua, that is love. And he is the sun, S-O-N, that shines brighter than the sun. And he has a wholeness for you that no matter what you're going through, no matter what pain you're feeling, emotional, mental, physical, no matter what, that when you call upon the Lord and you truly allow his presence to manifest, which is done through worship and praising, which is so not usual for our minds to come up with that solution. It's so, I can't even think of the word. It's just, you know, when you get a cut, you want to put a band-aid on it and that's all you're thinking about. But what would really heal it? It's, it's we're, we're, we're taught to cover up the problem and to try to counteract it with our own forces. But God wants us to step outside of what we would usually do and do something different. Applying His healing balm, who He is into the situation, calling on His name and trusting Him fully and His word. Healing is not a four, five, six, seven letter word. Healing is his perfection made manifest in a moment because of who he is, the spirit of the living God. Right now, I just pray that his presence would manifest in your life in this moment, that his Holy Spirit would touch you in a way that it would guide you into all of this truth that it would speak to you on a deep level to know that no matter what you're going through, he knows and he hasn't forsaken you. The enemy is going to have you to believe that he's forsaken you, but he hasn't. He wants you to reach out to him, call on him, praise him, glorify him. His presence will be made manifest and literally baggage will melt away. The enemy will flee in seven ways. I declare right now in a thousand ways. The only thing you're going to want to do is, is to fill yourself with the word of God. Read the word of God and, and let, it, let it soak in so that you can call on the name of the Lord in a more confident way. That you would understand how to apply all of the medicine he has for us. So in this day, if you're feeling downtrodden, if you've been hurt, if you've been manipulated, if you've been tortured, if you're feeling rejected, if you don't understand anything that's going on, yes, you can bind and rebuke demons, absolutely. But the lasting power of God is when you call upon his name. You literally set aside your feelings. Stop giving in. Stop the woe is me. And you know, years ago, I couldn't stand that statement, woe is me. I was like, you don't know my pain. You don't know what I've been through. But you know who does? He does. And he didn't cause it. But he is the answer. So call on him. Try it. When you surrender to the Lord our God, and you ask for his presence to come down, literally singing songs unto the Lord, breaking free 
of condemnation, breaking free of the evil words spoken on you, breaking free of the oppression of systems and governments. When you do this and you sing unto the Lord, Lord God, you are so wonderful. You are a good, good father. Thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us all, Lord God. I need you now. No, I not only do I need you, I know you're here. Having that sort of bulldog confidence, the enemy cannot stand. Light eradicates darkness completely, 100% of the time. So you can go with your own power or you can go with his and have everlasting change and everlasting life. I just pray a special blessing over you today that you would feel his warmth and his sun greater than this one we've become accustomed to. He is an amazing, amazing God. It's funny, I don't know if, if any of you saw this shirt, but I thought today that I, I kind of just got this I, I didn't pick this out myself essentially, but God always protects. Yeah, it's a good one, right? See God in everything because he is. And you know what? He created everything. God bless you. God bless you for this renewed hope that all that you go through can be held in God's hand and dealt with. His will, not ours. But he has your best interest at heart. Don't let what the enemy meant for bad to cause you to go bad. You are blessed and highly favored and loved. You are radically loved. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus, for your spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for your hope. Thank you, Lord, that we just wait on you. But we have power now. Now. Salvation's now. God can move mountains in your life. He will cause miracles to happen in your life. You must act. You must do something. It's not a passive situation. You have the ability and you can do it. Try it. God wants you to have a better life. Don't believe the father of lies that you're not good enough. Because you know what? I'm tired of hearing people say that they're not worthy of God's love. You are worth it. God came here. Jesus came here for you and took on the world for you. But you have to apply it. You have to put the ointment on. Stop putting the band-aid on. Get healed and be done with it. There's more in this life than giving up. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's my desire to be like the Lord is my desire to be like him it's my desire to be like the Lord. It's my desire to be like Him. It's my desire to be a friend As 
he did his is my desire to be like the Lord it's my desire to be like him he's given us all of himself let us bask let us soak it in, let us take it in, being one as he has called us. Let us shine his light. Let us shine his light for and ever and ever. He has a plan and a purpose for all of us. And it is one that is just beginning. All darkness must flee. He is conquered. It is finished at the cross. It has already happened, an everlasting covenant upon us. We are his tabernacle, his temple. Let us not be deceived by the enemy any longer, living in bondage to that which is already dead. God bless you.